Welcome to page 55 of Anatomy Coloring Book. This is Dr. Stephen Harkins. The movers of the elbow and radio ulnar joints. Classically, we think of the biceps and the triceps muscle. Let's start out with the biceps uh, or the flexors of the forearm. These muscles right here, the biceps, starting with the biceps brachii, are flexors. They bring the forearm closer to the upper arm in this way. And this is the muscle you classically think of uh, when you would bring a drink to your mouth. You would, and the, the bodybuilders build their biceps to get very big, their flexors. So let's start out with the biceps muscle. First here we have the long head of the biceps. Muscle right here, biceps brachii. Brachii means arm. So here we have the long head. Called the long head because the tendon of the biceps brachii travels up, up, up here through the, what's called the intertubercular groove in between the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle. That's here and here. And the two bumps right there, and there's a groove in there. And the tendon travels up there to the supraglenoid tubercle. And it is the glenoid fossa of the scapula here. And it attaches there. So it's a long head that wraps up. And of course, by biceps, by means two, like a bicycle has two wheels, right? But the biceps also has a short head. And the origin of the short head is right here at the coracobrachialis, or excuse me, at the coracoid process. This is this big hook, this big bump that comes off of, of, of here, of the scapula. So it's the coracoid process of the scapula. Oops. And that's the origin of the muscle. And then it inserts all the way down here on the, actually on the radial head, on the um, the excuse me, the tuberosity of the radius, and I'll show you that in a moment. Here is the radial tuberosity here, um, right here. So the insertion comes right here. The origin of the short head is the coracoid process. The origin of the long head is the supraglenoid tubercle. And the insertion is here at the radial tuberosity. It's kind of tucked underneath the radial tuberosity because, or underneath the, the, the radius. When this arm pronates, or when you turn your palm down, here's called pronation, the radial tuberosity sort of disappears. Um, and imagine this forearm twisting down, that that little bump right there is going to fold underneath. And looking right here, the tendon of the tuberosity will sort of wrap or coil around. Um, imagine a stick with a string attached to it right here. And you, with a string attached, and you sort of twist the stick the string will begin to wrap or coil around the stick. Well, in a similar way, when the arm pronates, the forearm pronates, the tendon will wrap a little bit around um, the radius. And, um, and you, so you can see then that um, the biceps brachii, if you look down here, would be a really good supinator of the forearm too. As the arm pronates and the tendon is wrapped around the radius, when the bicep decides to contract, it will unwrap the radius and flip the radius or the palm into supination, which is a palms up position. So that's the biceps brachii. Now, the next muscle, the brachialis, is a very um, underrated muscle of the um, 
of the upper arm of the arm. And it's actually the main flexor of the forearm of the, of the forearm. It's this muscle right here, the brachialis. And it's underneath the biceps brachii. If you were to cut off the um, biceps brachii and unfold it, you would see right under here the biceps brachii, or excuse me, the brachialis muscle. And it does not attach to the radius. It attaches directly right here to the ulna. It inserts on the ulna. So the origin is the humerus, the origin of the biceps brachii, or of the brachialis muscle is the humerus here. And then it inserts right here on the ulna, the proximal ulna. The next muscle is the brachioradialis muscle. And this is identified by the letter C right here. And it originates here on the lateral humerus right here, and then extends all the way out to the um, distal, the styloid process of the radius, the distal portion of the radius. So the brachioradia, uh, the brachialis here. The brachioradialis. Brachii means arm. So brachio from the arm, the humerus. To the radius, brachioradialis. So its origin is right there in the name. And it is also a flexor of the forearm. Um, it is only a flexor of the forearm. The brachialis, which we talked about, and the brachioradialis, all they do is flex the forearm. Whereas the bicep brachii flexed the forearm but also supinated the forearm or brought, brings the palm up. And the pronator teres, the pronator teres is a smaller muscle. And you can see it here, sort of wrapping around from the, the ulna here, or the humerus and the ulna, right here, originating here and inserting on the lateral radius. And you can see from its uh, origin to insertion, the job, the action that it might have, which is to, if you see this, if you can imagine this muscle pulling this direction, what's it gonna do, supinate the arm? No, it's going to pronate the arm. So that's the pronator, the pronator teres. It's gonna turn the palm down. It's gonna turn the forearm down. Pronator teres. And here it is again, the pronator teres muscle. Um, extending underneath, you can see the brachioradialis muscle right here. The pronator teres slides underneath, and the brachioradialis has been cut away here. So you can see the pronator teres muscle. The supinator muscle is uh, this muscle identified by the letter G here. It's, um, it's a little bit hidden underneath uh, all of this here. So in the cutaway diagram here, in the anterior, we see the supinator originating here at the lateral epicondyle here and inserting on the lateral radius. And you can see if this muscle pulls in this direction, what action is it going to perform? It's going to turn the palm up. It's going to rotate the radius laterally into supination. But you can also see right in here that the supinator muscle has an origin as well right here on the lateral part of the ulna, the supinator crest of the ulna, right in here. If you can imagine, this muscle wraps uh, around the back side um, to, here you can see it right here, the supinator as well, 
wraps around the radius and coils around the radius and so that when it contracts it uncoils and flips the radius in this direction in the lateral direction into supination and from the posterior you can see the the origin and insertion here the origin here and the insertion here and when this radius turns into pronation the contraction um, will pull it in the opposite direction into supination by sort of a coiling and uncoiling the supinator muscle Pronator quadratus muscle is found actually distally right here on the front of the wrist, originating here at the ulna and inserting here at the radius, as is seen here, the distal ulna, and then inserting on the radius. And you can imagine if this muscle contracts in this direction, it will flip the wrist downward into pronation, rotating the wrist downward, rotating the forearm downward. That is the pronator quadratus muscle. And you can see by its shape why they would call it quadratus. It has a four. It looks like a muscle that has four sides, like a, like a square. And quad meaning the number four. Now moving on to the extensors of the forearm. Those are the flexors, supinators, and pronators of the forearm. But what about the extensors? The triceps brachii. These are the muscles that straighten the arm out, straighten the elbow out, as opposed to the ones that curl the elbow and bend the elbow, bend the forearm. And so, of course, this massive structure on the back of the arm here is the triceps muscle. Now, tri, of course, means three. So what are we going to expect? We're going to expect three heads uh, where the muscle originates. So the lateral head right here, originating on the posterior humerus, the lateral head, and we have the long head of the triceps, which goes past the humerus and on to uh, originating on the lateral border of the scapula, right here, the lateral border of the scapula. Now underneath it, if you cut away, that's the lateral head and the long head. There is another head of the triceps muscle deep to the long head. It is the medial head right down here. And when we cut it away, you can see that the medial head is more actually quite expansive with the, with the, uh, with the medial head here with the, um, with the long head cut away the lateral head here, and then the long head right here, cut away. There's the long head cut away. Now the insertion of the tricep is right here on the olecranon process, right here on the back of the elbow. Um, right here on the back of the elbow, you can see the, tri the massive tendon of the triceps inserting right at the olecranon process of the ulna, the ulna. And lastly, we have the anconius muscle, the anconius muscle, that's right here. The anconius will be in blue, originating from the posterior ulna, or excuse me, originating here from the lateral epicondyle of the ulna, right here. And then inserting 
on the posterior um, ulna, the posterior superior ulna. And the job, of course, of the Anconius is also extension. One aspect that has been uh, not to be overlooked here is the the biceps brachii muscle as it comes down and as it inserts, as you know, onto the radial tuberosity. Um, there, under underneath here, to the to the radial tuberosity, it also has a branch out here, which has been cut, that inserts into the flexors, the aponeurosis or the sort of tendon or the fascia of the flexors of the forearm. And um, I think we'll see a little bit about that in the next lesson when we learn about the movers of the hand and wrist. But um, yeah, so also uh, so sort of uh, sleeving into the, the, the hand and wrist flexors, and that's this part that's cut off right there. So not only does the biceps brachii have two origins, two heads, it also has two insertions, one down into the radius and one into the aponeurosis of the flexor muscles of the flex hand flexors. And this represents the end of page 55. I'm Dr. Stephen Harkins. This is Anatomy Coloring Book 